Do you need to get an e-signature for a bill of sale? Let me show you how with JotForm Sign. Hey JotFormers, welcome back. I'm Kimberly and I'm currently in the desktop version of my dashboard. So the first thing I want to do is go up to the top left hand corner and we can either click here and head over to my sign documents or we can click on create a form and then all the way on the right hand side, it says create a signable document. Now from here, if you already have a PDF version of your bill of sale, you can always use the upload document option. For this video though, I'm going to go ahead and check out our templates. And if you want, you can always use the search option at the top, but I'm going to go ahead and utilize the types over on the left hand side right here. We have bill of sale. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use the second one, the Texas bill of sale. Now, before I make any changes, I always like to do a really quick run through and see what I'm working with. So I can see everything here right now is orange. And that means that only one person needs to sign everything up here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. Looks like it's a one page document. And right here we have a signature of the buyer and signature of the seller. So we can see that the buyer is in blue. So let's go back up here to the top. One thing that I really want to encourage you to do is make sure you're looking at every single piece because sometimes as we saw, all of this looks like it needs to be signed by the seller. When we can see right here, it says known as the buyer. So we need to change this right here to the buyer. And it's really simple. All you need to do to change it is choose any of the fields. And then right here, it says me, you just need to change it over to the buyer. Perfect. And we also need the street address to be the buyer. All right, good deal. Now, if there are any fields that are missing that you specifically need on your document, it is very similar to JotForm Form Builder. So over on the left-hand side, you can click on Add Fields right here, and then you can just drag and drop anywhere that you need to add something. And you can see anytime you bring something in, it's going to populate the right side panel, which is going to be the properties. We can change it to me or the buyer. We can edit the field label and we can also make it required or not. But for this example, I am fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this field and I'm going to go to the top right hand corner and I'm going to preview this document. Now, as of right now, this document is going to look exactly as it looked over in the builder. And we can see right up here, we have 27 fields to fill out. But if I want to see just the buyer, I can come into the top left hand corner and I can change this to just the buyer. And we can see right up here, the number of fields to fill out change to five. And we see this right here and then the sign down at the bottom. So I think that is great. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the preview mode and let's talk about the tabs across the top. So the first one's going to be the settings tab. Now this is where you can change the overall title of the document if you want. Next, we have the email settings. We have our subject if you want to change what that looks like. And we also have an email message. I'm going to go ahead and make this please sign ASAP. Now this message is going to go to every single person who is going to be required to sign this document. Now, if you have any integrations that you would like to add in, you can do that here, but let's jump over to the send button because that is where the magic happens. So you can see we have me, and then we also need the buyer's information here. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in their name. And then beside everyone, you can see we have a key and then we have a message bubble. Now, if you would like for specific people or certain people to have a password or a passcode, you can click on that key and you can give them a specific passcode. I'm just going to go ahead and use one, two, three for this. And then the message is going to be a specific message just to them. When we were in the settings tab, we had the please sign ASAP. That's going to go to everyone. This is just going to go to my buyer. So I'm going to use this to say the passcode is a one, two, three. Now we can see because I utilized the passcode and the message, it's in blue. And let's say we have a little notification right here. Next, let's check out the options tab right here. We have an expiration date that we can set. We can send reminder emails. We can have signer delegation turned on. And then if you want, you can also CC different people, but let's head back over to recipients. Now, if I press send it to sign right now, both me and the buyer are going to get the email to sign at the exact same time. And that is not what I want. I want to make sure that I get it first so I can pre-fill everything. And then when I'm done, it'll go to my buyer. The way to do this is to turn on signing order right here. 
So as of right now, it's going to go in order. So if I hit send a sign, the buyer is going to get it first. And we know that I want to get it first. So we have these dots right here. We can move any one. And if we have multiple signers, you can move them any which way you want. So I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and send to sign. And here we can see me. We have my buyer and then we also are showing the passcode as well. Now, before we jump over to the email to fill this out, I definitely want you to check out the inbox. So I'm going to head up to the top left. I'm going to change it from sign builder to the inbox. Now, the first thing you'll notice is going to be all of the tabs across the top. The first one is going to be all documents. This is going to be where all of the documents that require your signature are going to live. The next one is going to be waiting for my signature and we can see this little number one right here. This is one we just sent. It is waiting for my signature. Now, as soon as I sign it, it is going to disappear from this tab and it's going to head over to waiting for others. Once they're done, it'll jump to completed. And then we also have canceled and decline as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here on this waiting for my signature tab. And let's jump to the email, fill this out, then we'll come back and take a look at this once we're done. So you can see that general message right here, please sign ASAP. So let's go ahead and review and sign document. Now you might've noticed that this did say 22 fields, but it went ahead and pre-populated some for me. So now we only have 20 fields to fill out. So I'm going to go ahead and do the required ones real quick. And then we're going to jump down to the signature. Now, the great thing about the signature is it's going to allow you two different options. So the first one is going to be, you can just hit next like this. It's going to automatically sign up for you. You can even change the style if you prefer a different font, a different color, or you can draw your signature if you want. So that is it for that. Just for the time purposes, I'm going to go ahead and sign and complete, and then we'll jump over to that other email, sign and complete, and then accept and send. All right, so let's jump over to the buyer's email and let's finish the process. So we can see that general message again, please sign ASAP, but we also have that private message saying the passcode is one, two, three. So let's go ahead and review and sign document and we'll enter in that passcode, then validate. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump down to the bottom and do the signature. So the same thing, we can either type it or we can draw it. So as soon as you click on it, if you hit X out of it, it's gonna automatically sign it for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the date and then sign and complete and accept and send. Good to go. All right, so let's head back over to my inbox and we can see here, it is no longer waiting for my signature or waiting for others. It now lives over in the completed tab. Now, one thing is we can go ahead and take a scroll. We know that this was a one page document, but you can see there's one more right after it. We have an audit trail. So if you need to know where this went and when and how long it took in between, you have a lot of information at your fingertips with the audit trail. Now, if you need to print or download, we can just do that right here. But another thing I wanna make sure you're aware of is all of this data also lives over in your tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over there. And if we go ahead and scroll it down to the right, we get to see our signatures and all of that data again also lives in tables. And it's as simple as that. If you have any questions about utilizing JotFormSign for your bill of sale e-signatures, let us know and I'll see you next time.